I'm joined by Usama Khatib, Director of Stanford Robotics Lab, who has focused his research on robotics in extreme environments, including the ocean and space. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure, Natalie. If we can, first of all, talk about some of the challenges those extreme environments we've just mentioned, space and the oceans, present. What are those extreme conditions? We live in a planet uh, with many challenges and uh, extreme environments are places where uh, you cannot go. So robotics uh, in the oceans, in space, but also in uh, places where we have disasters, uh, like intervening in Fukushima or intervening in places where we have radiation, intervening in uh, uh, places where we have fire. All these places require remote connection uh, because these robots need the support of human. Uh, but at the same time, these robots are going to need uh, autonomy to operate. And this is what is needed, is how to connect human intelligence, intuition to the machine that is working in that environment. So we developed a technique that allows us to control a uh, robot remotely over the internet. And yesterday, uh, we have our device, which is a haptic device, and we were connected through the internet to uh, Seoul, to uh, Singapore, uh, to DLR in Germany, and to Stanford, four locations. And remotely, the robots were feeling what we were sending in command, and we were feeling the touch. So we were doing assembly remotely. This is incredible. So you talked about robot autonomy. Can you tell me how that joins along with the sort of necessity of human-friendly design? Because it sounds great. Does it look great? Is it functional? We are building robots to do intervention in medical environment, uh, very close to humans. And this has been a major aspect of my research, how to make robots safe. So we started building robots that are mechanically safe, in the sense that we build robots that can be reconfigured for each patient. And whatever happened, a sensor broke, a motor broke, or the computer uh, broke, the robot will never go in the workspace of the human mechanically, it's locked. And when we have another patient, we reconfigure the robot, and now the robot is safe for that patient. So safety is now advancing to a level where we can guarantee 100% that your robot is safe. And are there any applications outside of these extreme conditions like space or the natural disasters you've mentioned? What kinds of things can we see being done? So robots can be part of uh, the support for the elderly in, at home. Robots can be part of the support to workers to reduce the amount of effort. So the worker is guiding the robot and the robot is lifting the weight. So in everyday robotics, we are seeing potentials of robot. But at the same time, we are now exploring robotic in extreme environment uh, to, to see how far we can bring those technologies to assist human and bring about uh, interventions in environment where humans should not be there or cannot be there. Thank you so much for joining us in the IRS TV studio. It has been a pleasure. Thank you.